Hello everybody, this is Manuel, and today I want to talk to you about Photolemur 3. So there's a third version of Photolemur that just came out, and I want to give you my feedback on it, show you the quality of the photos, and primarily I want to show you how it works. So I did a video about Photolemur 2, uh, I think it was a 2.1 version, and I was explaining a little bit how it works, but I was showing the difference between the uh, Lightroom, Mac Photos, and Luminar like one click wander, if you will. And then you'll see there's a bigger difference between all these software. So today I won't show you the difference between all of them, but I would like to show you how this specific third version works. So let's dive right in. Okay, now we're looking at Photolimur here, right in the middle. So that's what happened when you click and open it as a standalone version. It can work as a plugin as well for Lightroom and Photos. But Photolimur can work um, as a single image or batch process as well. So you can put a bunch of images together and it'll work. So let's have a look. So let's say we can open one image at first. So what's happening here is Photolimur will analyze your image, look for uh, the contrast, the saturation level, shadows, highlights, and whatnot. Look what type of subject you have into your image as well. And if you have like a person, you took a portrait, then it'll adjust with the, the faces and so forth. So after it, the analyzing part is over, it'll prompt you with a before and after slider where you can take a look to see what difference is. So you have this nice photo of a killer whale well taken from uh, San Vancouver Island in British Columbia in Canada. Now, there's certain things you can do. It's very limited, but it's a one-click wonder, so it's an AI software, so you can reduce the in intensity of the effect. So there's the little brush, you press on it, and then there's a slider, so you can bring that up or down and take a look and see the difference. So the opacity will change. And there's three options. There's the lens correction that's on right now. There's the face enhancement. It's also on right now and eyes enlargement. So if you shoot portraits and stuff like that, you can decide to leave these two on or off. And you can also change that into the top menu here into the settings. Now, another thing you can do is whenever you're happy, you can press back on the little brush icon that will disappear is to click on the left por uh, portion bottom of this software here you have the style so you do have different styles that you can apply filters to your image so let's have a look and press the polo so what's going to happen is uh, photolimer will be just putting stuff together here and it will create a new image for you with that apollo style that you just apply to it so if that's what you want to do you can apply and whenever you're happy you can go around and again you can decrease the effect if you want to and then choose a happy medium when you're happy with that you can export and then you have the options to export Flickr, email, Facebook, Twitter, Smug Mug and to your own personal computer, your disk. So let's say we're happy with this and then you, you want to export, you can do so. Now let's have a look at how you can do batch processing with it. So you can press open more right here in the top left and let's choose let's say three image and then we're going to press open. So what's going to happen here is you'll see your image will appear into that little folder here in Photolimur and then there will be like filter applied to them there. So you can decide if, if you like them or not. Right from the get-go here you can press export and then you'll export the three photos in this case to a folder of your choice. Or if you want to you can press on let's say the second image here and then you're going to go to that specific image and then you'll be able to tailor that image, apply the filter or decrease opacity and whatnot, right? So we can press the X to cancel this. Let's say we're happy with the three selection. So we can export the three photos. Let's do it to the disk and I'll show you a little bit what you can do here. Uh, let's say you want to put it into a new folder, test, create and save. So now your image are getting saved into this folder and this is it. This is how Photolimer will work for you. And then you can also cancel this if you want. Then choose just one here. And then when you put it to your desk, I'll show you in a second here, you may have more options to uh, change the setting as JPEGs or TIFF or whatever you feel like and change the quality as well. So export to your desk. And then 
You can choose a quality changes. You can choose advanced settings as well. And this is it. So if you want to, you can go that avenue or you can use Photolimer as a plugin. So like I mentioned, it works into Mac Photos, Luminar, uh, sorry, uh, Photoshop as well as Lightroom. So I'm in Lightroom right now and I'm gonna quickly go through a few images here. So when you do that, you wanna be in Lightroom, you wanna do the actual Photolimer enhancement. You go right click, edit in and Photolimer and then it'll ask you to create a copy. So that's why I have duplicates of all of my images here. So I wanna show you a few uh, categories of image I like to call. So we'll start with the red ones, which are my landscape photos. I'm a landscape uh, wildlife lifestyle traveler photographer. So that's probably what I shoot. So we'll go through a few of those and I'll show you a bit the before and the after. So you can have a bit of an idea what you like or not. So I've got this image, we're gonna go full and here we go. So that's the before, that's the after. So the sea is a little bright on this one. Now take a look at this image. This is a great one. The contrast of this image is very, very bland a little bit. The sky, a lot of color is increasing in the sky, but you can't see too much. Now look at the after. Now this is a great change. Now this photo is usable. The trees are very nice now. Lots of details everywhere. Now we get this image. Again, take a look at this sunset, beautiful. This one was dramatic. We had a lot of forest fire and then the smoke came through and then look at this now. Lots of beautiful color in the sky. Very dramatic. Very nice. Now this photo is a really, really hard one because the sun is somewhere in there. The sky is overblown and it's very dark in the foreground. Now take a look. Big difference. Now the foreground is usable. It's very nice. The sky was overblown so it's still a little too bright there but that's fine. Now this image is very good. I'll take bring attention to the contrast of the image, but especially like the color in the trees and the water there. And I'll take a look at the difference now. Beautiful. This image, uh, very flat and nice sunset. The fog bank there next to Port Hardy, Northern Vancouver Island. And now major, major different, lots of contrast. Now, maybe that's one I could have like slide the opacity down a little bit, but it looks very good. Now this is a JPEG. I'm gonna try the JPEG. The other photos were all raw, but this one worked very good as well. So you can work with JPEGs, no problem. I had to tune down the, the effect quite a bit on this one, but you can tell it's a good result anyway. And this one is taken from a little creek in the forest. Now this one is, uh, you know, it's a kind of a medium uh, strength in there because there was a lot of blues that came out into the water I didn't like too much. So I had to bring the effect down a little bit, but that's about it. So you could tell I could perform very well with, uh, with my photos I've taken of landscape. So now this is a series of photos with a subject. So Photolimer will find a subject image and look at everything. So let's take a look at these ones where there's a subject in the image. So a little cricket, everything else is very bright, not much contrast. Now this is a little better. Now we get Rachel drinking a little drink at the Smith Tower in Seattle. That looks very good. Now the ceiling got revealed very nice. So I mean, my subject looks good too. And then this one, Rachel is very dark and the sky is okay and the foreground is a little dark now. Look at this. Now the scene is very nice. Rachel and Anne is still a little dark to my taste, but for the limer did a good job with everything else. Now this, I took that as an HDR bracket when I took the originated photo and now this was the brightest. So you can see the sky is a little overblown, but the foreground is very nice. And Rachel, she's not too dark in this image. Now this worked way better in this case. Now uh, we were able to recruit, like recover the sky and the foreground is actually very nice. Now this one is fantastic. Now look at the before again, like very dark foreground. Rachel's dark, but now look at that. It's just amazing. Now everything is just, there's a nice pop. So it's a nice result. And Rachel here, portrait now, you can't see the eyes or anything like that because she's wearing sunglasses, but I like how in Photolimer kept that into a natural set. It's not already done, it's just perfect. And then that's a little dog I took in Thailand. And again, very nice, it brought the shadows, but details, a little brightness everywhere. So it's a very nice scene. Now this one of Rachel here, um, Works very good. So this is what happened with 
well, I'm going to zoom in her face a little bit. So take a look at the skin there. It's been softened quite a bit. It's very nice. And that's the before and that's the after. So Photolimer will take a look at the person if it's a portrait, make it, make it more flattering. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this is the skin tone is very greenish. Um, it went from a natural color to a little bit more of a greenish color. So, but something you can change in the white balance pretty easily. So a little scorpion, not much change in this image. And now uh, Rachel sitting in front of a waterfall. Now you can tell there's that much more contrasting color. It's super vibrant and the background looks beautiful. A bald eagle. Now the bald eagle itself didn't change too much. A little brightness in the feather, but the scene got bright quite a bit. So that's very nice too. And that one is also very good. So take a look at the sky. Don't mind the dust spots and everything else, but the sky is not overblown, but it's kind of white, not much details in this specific photo. And now look now the difference. We can actually see details in the clouds and everything. And my subject is properly lit and looks good. All right, so let's move on to the next category and that's the building. So this is something that I was not expecting, but this is in Vancouver now. A lot of glass building out there in downtown and nice sky. It was beautiful sky that day. Now I really like how everything pop, how there's nice color in the glass. And again, Photolimer did a fantastic job at making things look fantastic, especially on buildings. So that's Seattle, very dark foreground. It's a little darker, but I took a darker exposure for the sky primarily so I wouldn't lose the details. And now look at that. It looks fantastic. Lots of colors in the trees. The greens come out very well. So that's a big strength of Photolimer. Like the trees looks fantastic. The green in general. And then again, the building looks great. So now this temple, the white temple in Thailand, I'm going to bring attention again to the green in there and the sky. And boom, very good. Nice romantic effect. This is amazing. Now in Quebec City, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more vibrance, not much difference. Now it's inside a church. Now a lot more detail got revealed, way brighter, a lot more color, looks great. And this nice building here, Parliament Ottawa, and then you say the night, nice guys, looks great. And then buildings brighten, nice contrast in there as well. So very pleased with actually the buildings all around. Another thing that I think Photo Lemur came out very, very good um, is darkened images at night. So this market photo in Vancouver here, you can see a little bit of a difference, not that crazy, but the next one here is actually very nice too. It's a darker image and then look at the result after that. Like lots of nice details now came out, but just a fine bounce, it's not too bright. Now Skyline in Vancouver, again, nice detail came out, beautiful. Not much saturation or craziness in the sky, but nice job in general. That one, again, lots of glass building, crazy sky once again. Now look at that, beautiful. That, again, the building results are amazing. I don't know why that wasn't, that one I mislabeled it, but still, beautiful image. So that one here, the market in Seattle, now very dark in the buildings in the back and everything. Now look at the difference major major difference and it's not too green either like it's it's actually a very good result and then you can tailor that and bring the slider down if you want if you find it too bright and if you shoot fireworks well guess what it is fantastic it did a fantastic job it's i'm, I'm blown away how photolimer deal with like dark images okay now for the purple i chose some photos that i thought was very challenging for a software that's a one-click wonder. So I have this picture taken in the fog, the sea line. Now look at the after. Wow. It's like we lifted the fog almost. Major, major contrast and it's just great. Again, another one here. Look at that. We almost salvaged this photo 100%. This is amazing. Now this sunset again, same sunset, but darker exposure and it looks super dark in the, in the top part of the image. And we got details now, amazing. And this one is taken with the uh, Sony a7 III. So uh, the new a7 III RAW files works. So it's fantastic. Now, a little hobby of mine, I take photos of hotel rooms and whatnot. I was in a pinch in this photo here, so I didn't have time to actually adjust the white balance properly, which I do that in post usually. 
but I took this one just to show you that photolimer does not bring the white balance down to what it should be. But it does brighten the scene and it makes things look better, but you would still need to readjust the white balance after the fact. So a little downside. So that's about it. Now I want to show you my favorite images and I'm going to talk quickly about them again. And this one, once again, very dark tree line and the mountains lacked a little bit in contrast, lack of saturation and this is just amazing result. And I don't think I could have edited like that fast myself. It's just great. It looks very nice. And uh, this photo of Vancouver, the skyline, again, beautiful result. I really like that saturation that's happening in the glass and the contrast and the clarity in this image. And then like pavement have nice detail in it. And it, it is just great for city shot sunset shots and landscape shot again this one i touched a little bit on it but fantastic result in this one again look at that before and after major difference took a few seconds and this portrait that I really like how quick and subtle the changes are really like it and final touch here the white temple just amazing the sky look at the sky I mean, it was good in general. I, I used my polarized filter, it looks fantastic, but like there's so much more vibrance in the sky. This photo now is rich and looks dramatic and looks great. So here you have it. So that's Photolimer 3 in a nutshell. You saw a few differences. I really like it. Personally, I uh, use Luminar. I use uh, Lightroom, Photoshop. Those are my, uh, my three to go um, software that I will use and uh, Aura. 2019 just came out by the way but this is basically my bulk of software I use when I do my editing now if you don't own any of these software and you're using the Mac software in Apple and then you're like oh boy this is not going anywhere then you can use Photolimer as a plugin very easy or if you're someone that own all those software but just like to just do a little batch export you get some photo you have no time to work on you get no desire to Put too much effort because you know that Photolimer will work great for you then Photolimer is for you. So this is it. If you like this video give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it give me a thumbs down. If you have any questions and comments or any other thing you would like me to review just leave that in the comments below. You can always subscribe to my channel, send me an email, anything you want to do feel free. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.